lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. How lovely. Lovely meaning not just beautiful, but also beloved in Hebrew. How beloved is God's dwelling place? What sacred place stirs your heart like that? Quenches your thirst? Where do you go to exercise an encounter with the holy? To touch the hem of God's robe? To feel the brush of God's breath on your cheek? Though you realize that the Spirit of God permeates everything, do you nonetheless have a place that feels extra special, spirit-charged, a beloved place where you can go to exhale, to be restored, to be inspired? It is August, and if we are lucky, we have spent time away from our regular routines this summer. On a vacation, at the beach, on a boat, at a cabin in the woods, or on some foreign shore. If we are lucky, we've been given time to rest and to recreate, maybe to retreat to one of those favorite spots, maybe to discover some place new. Many of you know or have heard me talk about Silver Lake Conference Center, a summer camp and year-round retreat center of our United Church of Christ tucked into the woods in northwestern Connecticut, just a few miles from Goshen, where the Reverend Ed Horn just retired after many years serving here as the Methodist minister in Westport and Weston. Shout out to Reverend Horn this morning. We call Silver Lake God's backyard. And it is one of my sacred spaces. It opens its arms to welcome me every time I go, reminds me to breathe deeply, to observe more closely, to pray more often. I remember who and whose I am when I am at Silver Lake. And it gives me profound joy that over 800 young people experience that sacred place and that extravagant welcome every summer. Over 800 children swim, hike, craft, climb, roast marshmallows, sing silly songs, worship and learn some of what it means to love God, themselves, their neighbors, and creation. How lovely is your dwelling place, O oh God. Maybe you have a place like that, where you feel closer to God, a place you long for when you're not there. The psalm we read this morning is called a pilgrim's psalm because it expresses that kind of yearning. It would have been sung by a devout Jew as she or he traveled to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. For according to Jewish tradition, the temple is God's special home on earth. The one place where God is most fully present among us. And so the pilgrim longed with every fiber of her being to reach that sacred place, to be as close to God as the songbirds that built their nests in the eaves of the temple. It may be something akin to the longing expressed by one of half a million, one and a half million Muslims who are traveling to Mecca on Hajj this month. Hajj, which is the Arabic word for pilgrimage. 
And maybe you've seen images of the throngs of women and men all in white converging on the courtyard around the Kaaba, the most holy site in Islam, where all Muslims are called together to worship the one God. Sometimes we go to tremendous lengths to reach our sacred places. The journey is grueling and the obstacles formidable. But if you have chosen that pilgrimage, you will likely find the strength to persist. It's like knowing that there's a deep pool waiting for you at the end of a long and demanding hike. Just thinking about a plunge into that pool, into the cool blue depths, will keep you moving forward. How lovely is God's dwelling place. But what about those who do not choose the journey? Those who find themselves so very far from home, far away from any place that might feed their spirit. How do the words of the psalmist sound on the lips of refugees? Two stories weigh on my heart this week. Perhaps they weigh on yours as well. The story of too many women and children who have fled violence in Central American countries like Honduras and Guatemala, only to be held in detention centers on our southern border. And the story of 700,000 Rohingya Muslims living in Bangladeshi refugee camps a year after escaping mass slaughter in their homeland of Myanmar. My soul longs Indeed, it faints for the courts of the Lord. What do those courts look like to asylum seekers? When they close their eyes, what sacred places do they conjure up? What home do they long for when the home they have fled is the very source of their trauma? If it was me, Though I can hardly imagine living through such anguish, what toll it must take, what courage to survive. Still, if it was me, I imagine that I would long for a place that promised refuge to both body and spirit. Having lived through dehumanizing circumstances, having lost more than I could bear to contemplate, I imagine that I would yearn to be gathered into holy, loving arms and assured that I am finally safe, beloved, deserving of dignity. How lovely to dwell in a place like that, a place that I could trust. If you are lucky, you know the joy of a deep plunge into cool blue waters. The joy of being welcomed by that loving, living God and of remembering who and whose you are. If you are human, you may also know what it feels like to live with that parched spirit. You might even know the grief of fleeing a home because it is not safe, or of wanting to crawl out of your own skin because the harm inflicted on you by someone else has robbed you of the ability to feel at home in your own body. <coughs> Beloved, if that is the case, then hear this. God's dwelling place is not some far away retreat accessible only to those of us with ample vacation days or adventurous spirits. On the contrary, God's dwelling emerges wherever we have need. It is called forth by our yearning precisely where our trust has been betrayed or our humanity denied. It bubbles up 
like a spring in the desert, right in the middle of the detention center or the refugee camp, the domestic violence center or your best friend's living room. Wherever you are, when you call on God's name, that is where God dwells. That is where God pitches God's tent. Yesterday, several members of Saugatuck Church took a field trip to visit Weir Farm National Historic Site over in Wilton, where one of our members, Mary Ellen Hendricks, is this month's artist in residence. Rolling farm fields, wooded trails, eruptions of wildflowers, and walls covered with Mary Ellen's photography. Images taken with an antique camera and printed on silk. This all conspired to stir up our collective sense of wonder. Standing in the presence of so much creativity, both divine and human, it was easy to say, happy are those who dwell in your house. They forever praise you. Standing in a place like that, it's easy to feel worlds away from those gut-wrenching stories of physical and spiritual displacement. But beloved, I believe there is something that links the two, our sacred spaces with the broken places, and that is God's spirit, which moves between and among us no matter where we are. For God, who calls forth prolific goldenrod and regal lilac to inspire artists like Mary Ellen, is the very same God that catches the tears of the refugee mother forcibly torn from her child. She is the same God who holds together the broken lives of traumatized Rohingya, who offers refuge for every shattered soul like a mother hen who gathers her brood under her ample wing. Yes, we may feel closer to God in this place or that, in our favorite mountain retreat, right here at Campo Beach with our toes in the sand, or in the sanctuary of our own home church. We may notice God in a splash of purple as the sun sets over the bay, or reflected in the gleam of a Roman cathedral. But that's not because God is more present in those places. It's because we are. Because our hearts are more open, are yearning closer to the surface, because something about that place has swept us up or surprised us into joy. This, my friends, is a gift. And like any gift, it comes with a charge. The same charge that we give to those 800 children who spend a few life-changing days at Silver Lake Conference Center each summer. It's easy to conclude that here and only here can you be this close to God, we say to them. But we invite you, we urge you, to take what you have experienced in this sacred place, the welcome, the grace, the spirit of inclusion, respect for others, reverence for creation, and carry it home with you. Carry it and share it with those in need. A little more love, healing, trust, hope, justice. What if we did that? What if we carried all the blessings of our summer retreats back into our everyday lives and relationships? What if we held on to that sense of divine closeness long enough to let it change us? And then, what if we set about to make our own homes, our churches, our communities, our world that much more hospitable for God's spirit, by which I mean more hospitable for all God's people. 
What if we gave our restored bodies and souls to the work of building that dwelling for which we all yearn? And then, then, maybe God, God's self, who was here all along, in every corner, and in every heart, perhaps God would join us in singing in a joyful voice, how lovely, how beloved is this dwelling place. May it be so. Amen.